for the first time. I spoke that day against a resolution sponsored by Iran to expel Israel from the United Nations. Then as now, the UN was obsessively hostile towards Israel, the one true democracy in the Middle East. Then as now, some sought to deny the one and only Jewish state a place among the nations. I ended that first speech by saying, gentlemen, check your fanaticism at the door. More than three decades later, as the Prime Minister of Israel, I'm again privileged to speak from this podium. And for me, that privilege has always come with a moral responsibility to speak the truth. So after three days of listening to world leaders praise the nuclear deal with Iran, I begin my speech today by saying, ladies and gentlemen, check your enthusiasm at the door. You see, this deal doesn't make peace more likely. By fueling Iran's aggressions with billions of dollars in sanctions relief, it makes war more likely. Just look at what Iran has done in the last six months alone since the framework agreement was announced in Lausanne. Iran boosted its supply of devastating weapons to Syria. Iran sent more soldiers of its Revolutionary Guard into Syria. Iran sent thousands of Afghani and Pakistani Shiite fighters to Syria. Iran did all this to prop up Assad's brutal regime. <clears throat> Iran also shipped tons of weapons and ammunition to the Houthi rebels in Yemen, including another shipment just two days ago. Iran threatened to topple Jordan. Iran's proxy, Hezbollah, smuggled into Lebanon SA-22 missiles to down our planes and Yahoo cruise missiles to sink our ships. Iran supplied Hezbollah with precision-guided surface-to-surface missiles and attack drones so it can accurately hit any target in Israel. Iran aided Hamas and Islamic Jihad in building armed drones in Gaza. Iran also made clear its plans to open two new terror fronts against Israel, promising to arm Palestinians in the West Bank and sending its Revolutionary Guard generals to the Golan Heights, from which its operatives recently fired rockets on northern Israel. Israel will continue to respond forcefully to any attacks against it from Syria. Israel will continue to act to prevent the transfer of strategic weapons from Hezbo to Hezbollah from and through Syrian territory. Every few weeks, Iran and Hezbollah set up new terror cells in cities throughout the world. Three such cells were recently uncovered in Kuwait, Jordan, and Cyprus. In May, security forces in Cyprus raided a Hezbollah agent's apartment in the city of Larnaca. There they found five tons of ammonium nitrate. That's roughly the same amount of ammonium nitrate that was used to blow up the federal building in Oklahoma City. And that's just in one apartment, in one city, in one country. But Iran is setting up dozens of terror cells like this around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, they're setting up those terror cells in this hemisphere too. I repeat, Iran's been doing all of this, everything that I've just described, 
just in the last six months when it was trying to convince the world to remove the sanctions. Now just imagine what Iran will do after those sanctions are lifted. Unleashed and unmuzzled, Iran will go on the prowl, devouring more and more prey. In the wake of the nuclear deal, Iran is spending billions of dollars on weapons and satellites. You think Iran is doing that to advance peace? You think hundreds of billions of dollars in sanctions relief and fat contracts will turn this rapacious tiger into a kitten? If you do, you should think again. In 2013, President Rouhani began his uh, so-called charm offensive here at the UN. Two years later, Iran is executing more political prisoners, escalating its regional aggression, and rapidly expanding its global tyranny. You know, they say actions speak louder than words. But in Iran's case, the words speak as loud as the actions. Just listen to the deputy commander of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Quds Force. Here's what he said in February, quote, the Islamic Revolution is not limited by geographic borders. He boasted that Afghanistan, Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, and Yemen are among the countries being, quote, conquered by the Islamic Republic of Iran, end quote. Conquered. And for those of you who believe that the deal in Vienna will bring a change in Iran's policy, just listen to what Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, said five days after the nuclear deal was reached. Quote, our policies towards the arrogant government of the United States will not change. The United States, he vowed, will continue to be Iran's enemy. While giving the uh, mullahs more money, is likely to fuel more repression inside Iran, it will definitely fuel more aggression outside Iran. Excuse me. As the leader of a country defending itself every day against Iran's growing aggression, I wish I could take comfort in the claim that this deal blocks Iran's path to nuclear weapons. But I can't because it doesn't. This deal does place several constraints on Iran's nuclear program, and rightly so, because the international community recognizes that Iran is so dangerous. But you see, here's the catch. Under this deal, if Iran doesn't change its behavior, in fact, if it becomes even more dangerous in the years to come, the most important constraints will still be automatically lifted by year 10 and by year 15. That would place a militant Islamic terror regime weeks away from having the fissile material for an entire arsenal of nuclear bombs. That just doesn't make any sense. I've said that if Iran wants to be treated like a normal country, let it act like a normal country. But this deal, this deal will treat Iran like a normal country, even if it remains a dark theocracy that conquers its neighbors, sponsors terrorism worldwide, and chants death to Israel, death to America. I'm going to stop there, ladies and gentlemen. There's a reason why I showed you a clip of uh, Netanyahu's speech. Okay. Um, 
this is because it's Bible prophecy. As you can see, based on his concern, his deep fear, I can see it in his eyes. He's worried for the fate of Israel. Israel is being isolated. I'm going to show you a scripture. I believe it's Zechariah 12. Okay, with everything that's going on, it's not just Iran. There's so much scriptures in the Bible that talks about Israel being invaded, Israel being restored. But until Israel is invaded, Israel will become like isolated. The enemy, that the world will be Israel's enemy. So, there's a reason why I brought this up. Okay, like I said, Israel is isolated. Becoming increasingly isolated. This is Bible prophecy. I'm sorry, you guys. Milo? 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 Stop. Milo? Stop it. Milo, stop it. I'm sorry, you guys. It's my dog, and I'm trying to get this point across to you. Milo, stop it. If you see in Zechariah 12, the burden of the word of the Lord of Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth from the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. And in that day the Lord I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Okay, so... This is what the Lord is saying is that Israel will become a burdensome stone, which is true. Okay. Israel will be surrounded by many nations that are will be her enemies. But in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8 says, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that it and he that is feeble, excuse me, among them at the day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God and the angel of the Lord before them. And I shall come to pass, I'm sorry, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Look at this. Okay. This is a prophecy that's coming to pass. Cross-reference it with, with Joe chapter 2, ladies and gentlemen. Cross-reference it where the Lord talks about how he's going to destroy the nations that come against Israel. It also talks about the day of the coming of the Lord. It talks about it. The reason why I'm bringing this to you, ladies and gentlemen, is because this is Bible prophecy. Israel is becoming a burdensome stone. God says he's going to make Israel a burdensome stone because that's part of Bible prophecy. That means that the scriptures are being fulfilled. God has many... God has promises that he's going to fulfill in the scripture. Not a promise to destroy Israel, but a promise to deliver Israel. But for Israel to be delivered, Israel has to go through these, through these catastrophes first. And one of those catastrophes, the start of it, is Israel becoming a burdensome stone. Now this is happening right now. Israel is in serious trouble. In serious danger. I don't, I don't wish that on anybody, but I'm just telling you. Israel is in serious danger. So while you all fight amongst yourselves or um, attack true watchmen on the wall or um, talk about the rapture gospel or decide who's right or what show you should watch or when you go to work, this is happening. Bible prophecy is happening right underneath your noses. Do you know that the United States, uh, Obama, is going to veto a bill? For military spending that's supposed to enhance the United States military might, Obama's going to veto it. I believe that the Lord is using Obama to weaken the United States militarily because this country has it coming. That's just my opinion. I'm not going to state it as fact. It doesn't make any sense for 
It doesn't make any sense for any president to make these types of decisions, ladies and gentlemen. So his decisions that Obama is making is not normal. You heard Netanyahu said that it doesn't make any sense that the United States did this Iran nuke deal and then Iran is still saying that their policies towards the United States is not going to change, that they still see the United States as a threat, that the United States is still their enemy, and all this other crazy stuff Iran is saying to you and death to America and Israel. The United States just put Israel in greater danger than Israel was before by condoning this act, this, this nuclear agreement. Now you might think that is they should not have done that. I agree, the United States should not have let this deal happen. It should not even have gone to the negotiating table. It should not have made it that far. But the fact of the matter is, this is Bible prophecy. It is prophesied that the United States will be the head of nations. It is prophesied that the United States will fall. The United States was supposed to be the protector of Israel. You know, God's the protector of everybody. You know what I mean? God set up the United States as a tool. He was using the United States to watch over Israel. But the United States is destined to stab Israel in the back. And that's what's happening. Israel is being isolated by her closest ally, even that. Israel's going to have to go through some bumps in the road. But Israel's going to be restored according to Joel chapter 2, Zechariah 12. goes on and on in the scriptures. So we as believers in Christ have to pray for not just Israel, for her safety, because she will be restored. We also have to pray for our other brothers and sisters in Christ that have a veil over their eyes that are blind. We can't fight amongst one another and, and hate one another. We have to correct in love. I correct false prophets. I'm very strict and stern because I'm serious about the, I, I'm very serious about my father's business. I'm very serious about the word of God, about my walk with Christ. But the reason I correct people, you know, false prophets, and whether they take that correction to the Lord Jesus and pray, that's up to them, is because I have love for them, love for everybody, and I want to see everybody make it. In these last days, we have to love one another and love one another enough to correct one if we're in error or if we're talking about a false prophecy, or we're prof prophesying falsely or not just prophesying falsely if we're um, divinating or d false divination, false prophecy or if we're teaching false do doctrines. We as brothers in Christ have to reach out to that person in private one time and warn them of their errors. If they don't listen, you have to take it. You, you have to go with the second witness to that person. If they don't listen, then you have to warn the church. Because at the end of the day, you are trying to restore that person to righteousness like the word of God says. Because you love that person, you want to help them. You want to help correct them. Ultimately, they have to make that choice. But you're trying to help them. You're trying to restore them. It's a requirement in the Bible. We have to correct our brethren because we love them. We have to be stern about it, but correct in love. If you don't, it's a sin. The blood's on your hands. Ezekiel 18 says, I believe it's in Ezekiel 18. If you don't blow the trumpet, God sets watchmen on the wall. If you don't blow the trumpet, God's going to hold you accountable for those souls. The blood's going to be on you, the watchman's hands. So we have to help one another in these last days. And we have to pray for those that are lost. We have to pray for Israel. These are the last days. God said there was going to be five ages. Look at the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch prophesied the birth of Jesus Christ. The book of Enoch prophesied a coming king of uh, Israel. It prophesied the birth of David, Solomon, um. Like I said, Jesus Christ even prophesies the last, the, the the end times, the latter days, the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the second coming. Jesus is coming, ladies and gentlemen. We have to pray like never before. These are the last days. It's it's, it's getting crazy out there. I mean, things are happening one after the other, back to back. You know, Iran has troops.
in Syria, Russia too, and China, thousands of troops. Those are the nations that are prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39. They're taking their positions. Ezekiel 38 and 39 is unfolding little by little. You have to decide what you're going to do for the cross. You have to be a bold soldier for Christ and be willing to die for Jesus. Stop cursing one another. Stop getting set, correct in love. And let's pray for one another. Pray for Israel. That's the apple of God's eye. And the United States and all these other nations are messing with the wrong God when they come up against this nation. But it's Bible prophecy. It's not looking good. So I'm not here to bash you. I will expose false prophets as the Lord leads. But it's your choice what you're going to do. You're either going to live right by God or you're not. And you're going to have to stay for the un imaginable suffering that is supposed to come upon mankind Jesus says so in his word there will be tribulation like never before suffering that mankind's going to face it's up to you what you do I can't force you to make the decision but don't trust me take this message to Jesus in prayer